Welcome to Cosmic Comics, Games and Collectibles, your zen of geekism. We carry comics old and new, magazines, toys, games like Pokemon, Magic, D&D, Want Godzilla, Ultraman, Star Trek, Ninja Turtles, Funko Pops? You'll find it all here. Shop our Cosmic Sound Room and pick up a record or two. Enjoy our Comic Coffee Lounge with a cup of Sasquatch coffee or a delicious menu item while geeking out over a super cool movie on our big screen. Come by and say hello to Maui. Cosmic Comic, Games and Collectibles. Superman loves us and so will you. Hi everyone, Daphne Lage here. Join Nita Lanning and me on the Rage Into the Vlogs show, where we talk about everything, nothing, and all the bits in between. Looking for hour-long conversations about indie comics, social media marketing, and crowdfunding? With the occasional rant and story time? Head on over to the Rage and 2 channel on YouTube, Mondays through Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern to join in the chat. Hit the button! Ed Gein, Demon Hunter, on Indiegogo. After a deranged demon escapes the bowels of hell, Satan is forced to send a damned soul back to Earth as a demon hunter. Armed with a sacrificial dagger, Ed returns to his old stomping ground to capture the demon before the universe is destroyed. Ed Gein, Demon Hunter. Issues 1 and 2 available now on Indiegogo. Prepare for the ultimate face-off. Good evening, everybody. I am R.J. Carter, Senior Managing Editor here at CriticalBlast.com, myopic proofreader for Critical Blast Publishing, Chief Envelope Licker for Critical Blast Logistics, and sometimes I do answer the phones uh, for Critical Blast Consulting. Tonight, tonight, I forget the rest of the words of that song, but that's okay. It's not karaoke night anyway. This is launch night. We don't have many of these. Usually, you know, people go to shows where actually people actually come and watch and do things. Uh, but, you know, somebody didn't tell this guy uh, that we're the least watched, most talked about show on the Internet about comics. And he decided to come here to launch his book. So I'm going to need y'all's help uh, to throw money at this thing to make me look good. Come on. You want me to come back, right? Okay, man, that's the wrong question to ask. Anyway, let's uh, let's get into this right now. Let's pop the top on this one and get ready to launch Rabbit's Badass Song. And with us tonight, we have the folks behind... I'm pointing my monitor like y'all can see it yet. I haven't even shared it. We have the folks behind Flash, uh, Flash Delirium, and that would be Chris and Chastity, and here they are, and, and Uncredited Cat. So, oh, yeah. see it? not that now we got we got three. The, uh, one of them is the editor in chief, but he doesn't want to be seen right now. Yeah. Well, he's busy. He's busy. Yeah. You know, he's got a book to launch. Yeah, How you guys good. doing? Pretty good, good, man. How about you? Jordan, I'm one Jordan. swallow better than I was a second ago. So, <laughs> I, I, man, you got some cool movie posters back there. That Back to the Future behind you, and uh, and yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars and uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. So, so you guys, big movie buffs? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh one of our our things. She, uh, Chas actually uh 
graduated from film school. Okay, so so you you've got yourself a Renaissance woman here because uh, she graduated from film school, and I already know from the pre-show that she was a chef. So yeah, you, you, and, you a just, so. and, and a comic book writer, and a comic book writer. Well, you know, two out of three ain't bad. Um, <laughs> when, when it comes to cool careers, uh, so what are you guys gonna like? Just gonna how do you how are you gonna fusion that together someday? You just open up a theater with uh, gourmet dining and uh, spinner rack. Um. I mostly just cook at home. That was just to pay for film school. <laughs> <laughs> the theater day is a good idea. We thought we always said like we want to uh, like because we're in Richmond, Virginia. We said we would love to have like our own like grindhouse theater. We could show a lot of the old horror movies from the seventies and stuff. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, I'm a big horror movie fan. <laughs> you, you know, if you're gonna do it right, it has to be a drive-in. Heck yeah. yeah. We yeah. have one here, believe it or not. It got turned to like a flea market now, but uh, yeah. We we have, um, I, I, I originally was uh, from Belleville, Illinois before I moved here to the Ozarks on top of my mountain here in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, and it was sparsely attended, but when COVID hit, it was the only game in town. Uh, and so suddenly they, they did much better uh, attention attendance wise. So it was it's really cool. It, it, it was it was very cool. I mean, I used to love going there, but uh, at the same time, it was it was hot on hot summer nights, and you know you weren't you couldn't run your air conditioner in a car because then you, know, you used to be able to, but now they've made cars where you turn them on and the lights come on. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, that's that's don't know what that's all about. <laughs> so, so, so what what are your favorite movies here? And obviously, I'm. I'm talking a little bit about you guys and what you do, and then we'll talk about the comic. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got, we got we time got, for we got time to launch, right? We've got 20 minutes to kill here. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, I'll let you go first, guys. You can let me go first. Yeah, ladies first. Um, okay, I love Beetlejuice. That's like Just one of my favorites. Don't say it two more times. Well, okay. Uh, Tim Burton, though, in general, I mean, I guess because that's my childhood. That's what I kind of grew up with. Um, and then Pulp Fiction, which actually I watched when I was younger, but I didn't appreciate it until like I was older and I saw like all the influences behind it and pretty much every Tarantino movie. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're big Tarantino fans. He yeah. actually you know, influenced our writing. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, I have a lot of movies that I like. Yeah, that's a good Somewhere. That's a good. That's a good introduction. Yeah, I, I I love the Tim Burton stuff too. Uh, and you know, you, most people will think, well, yeah, Batman. But uh, my my favorite was actually Corpse Bride because of all the little, just the little things he did. First of all, he meant the fact that he went and did a stop motion animation film in modern time, uh, when you know everyone else would just go CGI with three D rendering, uh, was was fantastic. And uh, have, have, have you seen Corpse Bride? If you're a Burton yeah. fan, you probably oh, yeah. have. Yeah. My, my favorite part of the whole bit isn't even story. It's when he's playing that piano and, and there's a the, the camera passes along the keys of the piano and you get the little brass plate of the make of the piano. Do you remember what it was? No. It was a Harryhausen. Ray Harryhausen. Oh, okay. Yeah. I the didn't guy who that. was a pioneer of stop motion animation with Clash uh, of Titans on Sinbad stuff. Yeah. 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 I didn't the, even know that. Cyclops. Yeah. Well, he picked up some bit of trivia yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, what about you? I'm a little all over the place. I guess, as far as like my all time favorite movie, is well, Ravens of the Lost Ark. That, that, that's my favorite movie ever made. I mean, it, it, it's To me, it's the perfect movie because it does everything a movie should do. Plus, no, I love Harrison Ford. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Star, the original Star Wars trilogy and yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, far as my horror is my big fan. I'm a big Jason. I love Jason, so I love all the original Friday Thirteen films, first Nightmare on Street, Halloween, pretty much all John Carpenter stuff. I love everything he's done, like The Thing. Uh, I like a lot of like uh, foreign horror films too, like Italian horror, like the uh, Full Street, like oh, Zombie. Yeah, the Zombie and. Um, uh, Gates of Hell, AK City of the Living Dead, stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. If you're a big horror fan, uh, have you ever checked out um, AmericanHorrors.net? Yeah, that's up. Uh, it's funny you said it. I actually watched that, that that episode with you, Lucifer Storm, and uh, I can I can never say his, remember his name. The, uh, 
not American Horror Story. That's yeah. a, that's a series. No, 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 no. The guy that did uh Jeffrey Dahmer. The Jeffrey Dahmer comes yeah. out. It's his show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I it's funny. So I um I didn't know about it until I watched that show. And so I went to like after I watched the show that you guys did. I went to it, and it's funny. The first thing that popped up, it was this old, this old horror, horror movie. And I said, is this the movie I thought it was? Because when I was a kid, I saw this movie about this girl that got possessed by a witch. And the scene that stuck, I, and I watched a lot of fucked up movies as a kid. But there's a scene where, like, she was like, she liked this guy, you know, and, you know, he's like, oh, get away. So she killed him. And she cuts his dick off. And I said, what the fuck is that movie? So lo and behold, when I watched it, when I went to this channel, the first movie to come up was that movie, and it was that fucking scene. I said, "Son of a bitch!" There you go. <laughs> you know, right there. True story. True story. <laughs> and, and so, so he doesn't he doesn't uh, sanitize anything. And and being hard, I wouldn't expect him to either. Right. Uh, he just he just puts the raw horror out there in your face. Uh, there was a similar scene in a movie, and I could never remember what it was. I thought it was "I Spit on Your Grave," until I saw that again, and that was like, no, that was rednecks. Uh, this was a girl. Uh, Kid, not kidnapped, but held captive by Nazis. And he was, at, at the end of it, he was forcing her to go down on him. Mm. And then he screams and she looks up with blood all over her mouth. I'm like, why doesn't that always happen in that situation? Right. Uh, <laughs> it she would stop a lot of it if it became commonplace. Um, so I still don't know what that movie was. I'm trying to think of that one. You got, you got me on that one. Mm -hmm. What's that other movie that you watch at a, at a at a very young age that you should have seen that. Extra, oh, that, Extra. Extra. That's you ever it. seen that one? I don't think so. Extra? Yeah, yeah Extra, like X, X, T, R, O. It's supposed to be extraterrestrial, but he spelled it wrong on purpose. <laughs> it sounds familiar, but I can't recall of having actually so, seen That was made back in the 80s. It was, it was one of New Line Center's earlier films, and the guy that made it, it was a... It's a fucked up alien movie. All I can tell you, so the, the part that stands up, now mind, I saw the movie way too young, but the part that fucked me up was uh, the guy gets kidnapped by aliens. Like he, he, was, he was a husband, he had a wife and son, and for some reason, this alien ship like sucks him up. Like fast forward, like years later, they sent, he crashes back to Earth. He's like this fucking alien thing. And uh, he crawls to this woman's house and he attacks her and like this, this long tentacle follow thing comes out of his chest and attached to her face. You know, it's the same though, he's impregnating her. So cut to the next day, he's gone. Like, this is like a pile of shit left from where he was at. Now, like, she's like pregnant, but she's not just pregnant. She's like pregnant, like, like hugely pregnant. She literally nine gives birth to an hour. Huh? Goes nine, goes from, goes from an hour to nine months like that. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, like 34 years old. Like, I, I, literally, she gave birth to a grown man. He literally tore himself out of her. Jeez. Okay, yeah, I mean, tore, you know, he used to teach to tear the umbilical. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. But, you know, yeah, like, it was that. It was weird shit, like clowns and it was, it was a weird movie. But look at that extra. Yeah, it's a wild one. We had a lot of weird horror uh, in the 80s. I was I was in college. I uh, had an apartment with uh, three other roommates. And, you know, it was the big thing that we rented a color television set uh, and then <laughs> would go to the DHS store down the corner. <sighs> yeah, in the snow, uphill both ways, barefoot. Um mm. And fought off dinosaurs on the way there, but yeah, we would we would get things like the stuff. Remember that? That was like the, the oh, I yeah. love that movie. The, the, the sentient yogurt. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good one. Yeah, that's a good movie. Uh, but then we then we found Faces of Death. Yeah. Have you that's, watched any of those? I did. They don't hold up now. I mean, back in the day, but now I was like, this is this is. That this. bothered me like a lot when I saw. I've that. seen so dude. I've seen so much stuff now. Like that. That's nothing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, I know. I mean, you see faces of death in the 80s. It's like you're watching like this, like, I'm going to be sick. Oh, my. Oh, my God. You know, the guy jumps off the building. And that's when I realized it's not a cartoon. They actually bounce when they hit the yeah. ground. They don't just splat. They bounce. We're rubber uh, to a large degree. i uh, like, oh, crap. And now it's like, you know, YouTube's like, oh, that guy's going to. Yep. I told you. Going to lose his head right there. Let's roll that back. Look at that. That's right there when he gets the oh, yeah. told you him And just <laughs> keep on moving. <laughs> Lucifer Storm and I, we, we've been talking about that. You know, we, we have similar tastes in movies. We just throw movies back and forth for each other. We actually said, like, eventually one day we thought about doing, like, a, a podcast about this off-the-wall horror movie. So that could be something later on. Oh, yeah. That, that's what's the thing. You just have a regular weekly podcast and just spotlight some older horror movie and uh, just just dissect it. 
Yeah, I mean, dude, the horror community is huge. I mean, comic community is, is big, but like the horror community is like that thing is is this unreal? How many horror fans are out there? It's really cool. I recently watched we're, we're, one that I really enjoyed, uh, Psychomania, which is a horror movie from the UK, and there's no gore. It's like the there's 60s, no right? like blood nothing but it is a horror movie about the this motorcycle gang that comes back from the dead <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good that's a pretty good movie <laughs> it's, i love it yeah and you can always tell european horror is different than american horror uh, it's 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 slower and it's quieter to some degree but then but then you get like fulci and suddenly it's like you know all this psychotronic light and you're like yeah, fulci I can't see is anything. <laughs> No, when they, he was all about just the shock value. He was all was about gore and stuff. He didn't give a shit about the story, <laughs> you know. So, but uh, no, but then you got like, uh, what was it? Uh, Argento. He he was he was kind of like a, he was somewhat Hitchcockian. I don't know. I mean, he, he was a little more dream logic, his films. But um, but you know, but the whole like Italian heart it started for like, I did crime novels. Like that was got jolly a gallo. I can never say it right. Because there's like a whole documentary on it, like how you know how Italian horror started out, what it became. It's really fascinating. Right. Well, Ar Argento was Argento's kind of weird because he he direct these films. Dario Argento's directing these horror films, and his grown daughter Asia Argento is starring in them nude. Like, yeah, we, we had conversations about that too. Yeah, that, that, that there, there's some. Uh, I don't know what that's all about, but. <laughs> You know, it's it's that again that European mindset. Oh, so she's so she's naked. So it's a lot. Does it? Yeah, he don't give a fuck. I mean, I, I I'm not really a big Argento fan actually. My favorite movie is the one nobody talks about is Phenomena with Jennifer Connelly and, and uh, Donald Peasants. I love Donald Pe Peasants. Did he do uh, Demons? No, he didn't do. He produced Demons. Oh, uh, Lamberto okay. Bava, Mara Bava's son, okay. directed Demons. Okay. Yeah, you guys really should do a pod. You, two of you, do a podcast on horror. <laughs> talk about them all night long. Um, but you went to comics. So here, here, first thing, have you guys done a comic before? Yeah, we've been working on stuff. You want to answer this? I'll let you, know. Oh, you can. I'm not good at talking. All right. So oh, rabbit share, rabbit. share a conversation. Come on. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I've been writing for ever since I was a kid. I've always written stories. And com you know, com the comic book thing kind of came a little later because I, I was a more than Again, I was I was more of a movie person when I start when I grew up. Uh, my first introductory to comics was Creep Show, that, you know that horror movie. Um, that's what made me want to do comics. Like, oh shit, you know this is cool, horror and comics. So I started learning about it through that. And it wasn't until like uh, Ninja Turtles came along is when I wanted to start like you know creating books. Cause, you know everybody Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird. You know that was yeah. part of not like, yeah. That, that was in the garage, so it must be easy. Yeah, you know. So and that's when I started drawing and stuff. But, but I, I got a background in art, but I was more, I was always more storyteller. It was, it was easier for me to, to write it out and do loose drawings to show certain things and have other people come behind, you know, like a more polished artist, you know, to, to flush it and out. Like to to lay it out, yeah. Yeah, so and I've always had that collaborative effort, you know, thing going in. But again, originally, I, I thought I was going to make movies. I really thought, I was, all right, I'm going to be a writer and do the directing thing. But, you know, that's a whole story in itself, <laughs> you know. Maybe one day, maybe one day, you know, we'll go back to that. You did direct. Yeah, and we did some short films, and I've, I've worked on like independent, like small independent stuff. And that's a pretty cool movie family I around. Would, uh, here. Take but, the Mark uh, Miller route and just, uh, you know, produce comics that are nothing more than well, not nothing more than I don't want to belittle your comic <laughs> right out the gate, uh, but produce comics that are next step phases towards movies, like you know that that's. Mark Mark Miller used to have you know Miller works and now it's Netscape comics literally. Yeah, uh, I don't Netscape. like that approach though. No. Uh, I always think like a comic book needs to survive on its own. It shouldn't be a setup for something else. You know, if it's good, if it's good enough, and you can translate. That's one thing. But I've never been a fan of stuff that they make guys who cut. To me, it's be little in comics. All right, I'll do this little comic, then hopefully I can take this and make my screenplay. I just don't like that. Yeah. Mindset. I think Netscape that ages me. That was a browser. Netflix, obviously. Netflix. But uh, but anyway, get back on subject. So uh, but you know, I've I've always written. You know, we always had ideas and stuff. And then when I, me and Chastity got together, we had you know we were both working on movie stuff. You know, and uh, we 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 were gonna do a couple of our own um films, but it just got to it, it got too much, like just finance wise, and that's just. Making a comic book is hard, but making a movie is even harder because it's more hands in the pot. It's more, 
the process is a lot more strenuous. Your, your characters talk back to you when you're making a movie. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, so the comic book thing, so we, um, about 10 years ago, we said, all right, we, let, let's, let, let's, let's take the comic book thing seriously. So this has been something we're working on for a long time. And uh, we had done a couple like little shorts and the rabbit thing kind of came out of uh, a joke. And we said, okay, and I, it, it kind of just spiraled into like this really big thing. And we looked for different artists at the time, and that was kind of like, you know, that was always a come and go till we, we didn't you know till we found the right mix. But what happened was, okay, let's let's do like another story. Let's do something small, because either way, we're gonna we're gonna like put money into this thing. There's no like making this thing cheaply or making it and expecting all this money, you know, to come back. So it really is about just creating up stuff and getting our name out there. So I created like a little horror story called Pop Singer, which that was gonna be a short horror film years ago, but it, you know, it worked out this way. So I wrote it up, Chastity went behind me, she edited it, she flushed out the dialogue and stuff. And I found an artist named Halil Mate online, phenomenal artist, our artist right now. I said, okay, this is, we can do, this is something we can do both ways. We can try them out on this. If that works, this will be our guy for our main book. So we did Pop Singer. That took about a, about a few months to do. We released it last year when we when we first did Flash Delirium. You know, we showed everybody what we we're gonna do. We put that online for free. And it's art, you know, it's like twenty page book, free, beautiful art and everything. And that was kind of how we got people to follow us. Yeah, yeah, you, you give them a taste. Yeah, uh, and if they want more, pony up the dough. <laughs> so you know, that was a good way to kind of again we we learned a few things, and that was a good way to kind of get our feet wet to do like an actual more a bigger produced comic book and that's when you know, we started doing the rabbit stuff because like rabbit like the first two issues that was all out of pocket there was no funding or anything we did it all ourselves yeah so so what you're doing with the with the kickstarter that's the first two issues uh are, are they because i can't see the campaign obviously yet are they standalone issues or are you compiling them into one uh big big book a, a trade so to speak so um the, the the way we wrote each issue is yeah it, it could stand alone like it tells like a story within the issue itself but overall it's a bigger arc okay there's, there's a and even where this story starts this is so hard to explain <laughs> for me because i'm not good at this but even where this story starts is it, it's it's gonna go somewhere else that it is insane it's not even the same it have a loose, yeah, evolution story and, and we've got that all planned out too but um I'm gonna let you take over because I'm mumbling now. That's okay. I'm rambling. You're fine. <laughs> but as far as like Matt's question about making comic books, like mm -hmm. you know, you're a very good writer. She she comes all right. So I can write better than I can talk. <laughs> she she's very well well read. Like she reads a lot of literary works, where I read more comic books and screenplays. So we kind of figure out a way to combine the three together. Yeah, and it works out pretty good. She's very good at dialogue, and I'm. Pretty, I Thank think you. I'm all right. You know, and, uh, I, I know how to pace things out and structure it. So yeah. I can do the outlines. And I was like, this is what happens. This, you know, A, B, C, D, all that shit. You know, then we get together and we fill in the guts of how the story's going to be. Then she'll write the dialogue. And then we'll break it down to like a, a comic book format for the artist. And usually the way we do it, and that way that helps us edit our, you know, she, we kind of throw back and forth with each other. She can edit it on the way. And by the time the artist gets it, it's all it's, it's, it's all it's pretty much all there. And you know, Halil, he does a good job about following our detail. Cause we, we write very detailed comics. We don't do the Marvel way, where we just like kind of like, all right, the building blows up, you fucking artist figure out the story. You know, we don't do you no know, just actual a story, and then the artist kind of just builds off. Sometimes of that. we do a little too many specifics. Yeah. <laughs> but that comes back like that, that kind of comes from like the movie background. So you know we. we our scripts are kind of a combination of a screenplay, but not to the point where it's all pudding. And again, I'm a big, she's a big uh, Neil, Neil, uh, Neil yeah. Gaiman fan. And we study oh, a lot yeah. of his screenplay. Of a screen, I'm sorry, uh, writing. I'm a, I love Alan Moore and Garth Ennis is my favorite writer. Well, so that's, kind of uh, you know. Alan Moore scripts are crazy. If you ever get a yeah. raw script from his. Yeah, 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 yeah. I read his deal joke. It's, it's, yeah. it's unreal. You know, I, I don't write. Cool. Yeah, we, we don't write that much, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I get where it's going with, you know what I'm saying? But it, it, it was a good way for us to learn how to you know, learn certain things. But yeah, it works out. So. Script the other day, and it was like, you know, one page, and it was like, and, and, and on it in comic book script form, was like page one panel this, and at the bottom of it was like the end of page four. He's like, this is how you write a comic book script. And I'm like, 
And then there's this. And I brought up the killing joke. And it was 12 pages of script to finish page one of the comic. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was like real. He, he's entertaining though, but because you know, really, like he talks, he he talks a lot to his artists in his in, in his scripts. Like I think that's 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 a mar, you know, yes. I admire that a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, he he does that. He does a uh, and and then he'll go off on a ramble, uh, just to kind of I don't know. I think he's trying to put the um, the artist in the same mindset that he's in. You know, I'm thinking about this. Uh, you know, I'm having some coffee. Uh, it's four o'clock in the morning, so you know yeah. the artist is feeling tired and. And everything else, so he's like, "Okay, I'm in Alan Moore's head now. What do I draw?" <laughs> and and, and that's where it is. Um, Chastity, were you reading comics? Uh, and, and yeah, yes. This is the how did a girl get into comics business question. Uh, were Were you reading comics before you and Chris got to working on this, or were you more introduced to it later on? I was introduced to it probably when I was like 12 or 13. There used to be like a stand at the convenience store that you would just. Yeah different things and i would i would buy things mostly for the art like witchblade i was buying that at like i don't know 12 maybe <laughs> and um but i i the things i read were like the archies or the garfields or like the collected uh garfield like things like that like funny yeah the andrews mcneil books that they would collect all the strips in sure yeah yeah I and, Hobbs that way yeah and i liked that one too and then um it wasn't until I met him that he got me into, um, I guess, more mainstream comics. Superhero like, pair. Yeah, like Teen Titans and oh. Spider Woman. <laughs> and... I was going to say, he, he hit you with the straight cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in, like, the more Wolfman, George Perez, Teen Titans. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and, and I was a fan back when it was, um, you know, Haney and Cardi. Uh, doing the Teen Titans. So when Wolfman and Perez did, I'm like, yes, my team is back. Oh my God. They're like cool looking now. Um, so, so yeah, in fact, I got this huge uh, new Teen Titans poster hanging on the wall that the camera can't see. Uh, George Perez did in 1983. So it's, um, I miss him still. Every time I talk about him, it's like, damn it. Yeah. Not. We got hit man like him, him and Neil Adams, man. I actually got a chance to meet meet Neil Adams one time, so that was cool. I mean, he was he was the close out route was gonna get to like the Stan Lee type guys. <laughs> so yeah. No, but he, he he was fun. He he, he gave you a lot of advice. He gave me some interesting <laughs> advice, Neil Adams. I was gonna say you're you you said you're not the artist, you kinda do the layouts, uh, so he didn't do a an art portfolio review for you, huh? No, I I did ask him though, and I and, and at he, that time you were drawing. Yeah, 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 but not. I asked him, uh, you know, what was it? What was his advice be the artist? And what he told me, he said it again. He, uh, Kevin Smith, asked him the same question. He told him the exact same thing. He told me this. He said, "Trace photographs." I'm like, "Huh?" I said, trace photographs. He said, "Yeah." He said, "Like the best artists, trace photographs." Yeah. I was like, oh, "Okay." I mean, that, that's literally what he told me. It was nothing else. He just that's that's what he said. <laughs> I was like, oh, "Okay." You start you start figuring out, you know, the proportions of where things go. Uh, through muscle memory, and then you can sort of work it from there. Yeah, I mean, and what's amazing is he's all surprised. <laughs> he does draw like a lot, and he has no depth perception because he's blind to one eye. Well, well, and that's uh, you, you, you sort of see the world two dimensionally already, so it kind of translates <laughs> easier uh, to the page. Um, but, but I've heard that Neil Adams' uh, portfolio reviews are a spectator sport. Uh, if, if, if he's going to review somebody's portfolio, it's like, oh, gather around and watch. There's going to be so he just tears it. He just tears apart, right? Yes. Absolutely. So I'm going to share the uh, screen that I've got here because we've kind of been not talking about Rabbit's badass song uh, because what time, what time it's it? still on the pre-launch page, folks. So. If you if you still want, you can hit the link below the video or the one pinned up at the top of the chat, uh, and get out there and say notify me on launch, and then you're going to almost instantly <laughs> get an email. Uh, by the way, the same link will work five minutes from now when it is launched. So, are you guys? Um, We're live. We're live. Ready? Oh, wait a second. It it it, it it's lunch. L lunch. Do we? I, it, is it breakfast? Lunch. And it's launched, so I should refresh this page, and what will I see? Come on, come on. There we are. We are live. Uh, 
And now there's a video that I could have grabbed. Zero backers. Let's watch this number climb up. I need this. <laughs> Give me something, people. Well, Come on. We'll see. <laughs> Give me a reason to exist tonight, folks. Um, so now that I've done it, I'm going to unshare it because you do have a video. And I'm going to reshare it with sound so that we can watch the video that you guys have put together. Okay. <laughs> And here we go. Hi, I'm Chris Edelson, and this is Chassis Lassiter, the writers and creators of Rabbit's Badass Song and Pop Singer. Rabbit's Badass Song is a gory, gritty, southern tale of revenge. It tells the story of Jimmy Mason, an African-American born in the heart of Mississippi to a well-respected madam, and Irene Honeycutt, a redhead with a fiery temper. After Jimmy fights against one of the town's controlling oppressors and a member of the Good Boys. Those boys get together to murder Jimmy and his mother. With Jimmy left to die and hanging from a tree, he's rescued by a man that's going to change his life forever. For 10 years, he and Irene train and wait. The events of that night haunt him and change him into the rabbit. Rabbit and Irene, now known as Snow Bunny, return to Lightfoot, Mississippi to take their revenge on the good boys. But this is just the very beginning of Rabbit's plan and his story. Pop Singer is a horror one-shot that follows Stacey Lynn, an up-and-coming pop star. The more popular she becomes, the darker her world gets. And soon she finds herself what? in this inner best, circle oh, of yeah, elites no. with occult ties. Who Make sure to check out the videos below where we'll show you more rewards and also there's links for reviews. I have to unmute myself. Okay, so you 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 basically put that video together, changed your shirt, and sat back down for tonight's interview, yeah. right? <laughs> That's what it looks like. Wally West, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And we have one backer already here at $150. Uh, so somebody somebody backed big. Uh, we can get this out of the way right away. This is what we call our shake and bake moment, folks. It's uh, shake and bake, and I help. Shake and bake, and I help. So whoever you were in the chat who helped, thank you. Always appreciate it when uh, when our chat gets thank behind. Yes, yeah, thank you. Whoever, who, yeah, I mean, so not good to go, but thank you. Whoever did that, and I, I, we we see what you got too. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So this, there we go, 2% of goal. We are there uh, on our way. Big steps. Little bit so, wow, the uh, the art styles, I'm, I'm loving both of them in both stories. The uh, round, um, there's something very manga about a lot of the work there, especially with the uh, rabbit's mask and the mouth and the and the way it's done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not the artist, but did you direct with any sort of influence uh, towards that kind of a thing? Yeah, so um, I, I did you know, some sketches for the artists and everything, and I was telling them, you know, I wanted the mask to be very mechanical and very menacing because there's a story behind why he's rabbit and why we did. I guess, should we go ahead and explain, talk yeah. about all that? All right, I'll let you. Yeah, why, no, why rabbit? Just... Rabbits don't, you know, other than Monty Python's killer rabbit, uh, rabbits don't seem very menacing. So um, are you familiar with the story, Brett? It's, some people say Br'er Rabbit, some people say Bra Rabbit. Do you know that story of the Briar Pack, Uncle Remus, and all that? I, I, I know Br'er Rabbit, the Tar Baby, and why you can't refer to it anymore. All right, so uh, so there you go. So not, now you know part of it right there. So that, that always fascinated me. I was always just fascinated by, by that concept. You no, know, then Disney, they did Song of the South, you know, the Zippy Doodah and all that stuff. You yeah. know, which they, we'll, we'll never see that on Disney Plus, but. <laughs> on DVD. <laughs> you know, but it, it, again, like it, it, to me, it's something very fascinating about that. And then what really set it off was Ralph Baskey. He did his version of it called Street Fight. Oh, yeah. A.K.A. Coonskin. You know, that Scatman Cabras with the song, you know, the N-word song and all that stuff. In it. And again, like yeah. that just resonated with me. So this is really cool, you know, because there's a whole story behind that. Richard Pryor, he loved that a lot. Wu Tang Clan, they were trying to get the rights to do a sequel to, to that called Coonskin No More Forever or something, but it never fell, fell through. So, anyway, I always said, man, I would like to take this and make my own version of Br'er Rabbit. And that's. So, what this is, 
what this is. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. This is a modern, uh, fairly modern. I mean, it, it's the South. So I never really know whether it's like a neo-Gothic uh, kind of setting or whether it's like yesterday South and I'm in the South. So, you know, it never changes. Um, and there are superheroes in this world. So th there's a lot going on. It starts out as a very like sub revenge story, but it becomes something much, much more. And again, that goes into like how there are superheroes and villains. And that goes to, again, my love for stuff like Brat Pack and the Watchmen and the Boys. You know, I, I like the deconstructed heroes, but I don't like, if you're gonna do deconstructed heroes, I reckon they'd be brand new characters. I don't really like how they say the Batman, Superman try to make those guys dark. I rather we just see brand new characters because that concept is fascinating. I just don't think it really works for like the already established characters. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Nefarious out there. Welcome, welcome, sir. Glad you're here. Always, always uh, reminds me of Donnie Darko. Um, he said, uh, <laughs> "Raps win battles all the time. Their opponents choke. I wonder if the chicken bones in this book are a coincidence." So <laughs> it, it is, again, it is the South. Uh, we got a lot of chicken bones around here. Um, and, you know, there's, there's, there's still that tortoise who's got bragging rights that I hear about. Uh, American comics out here. Glad you're here. Glad, uh, Hero Shack, backed. That means if we scroll up again here, oh, we'll thank see you. more backers. Wow. That's this, really this, awesome. It's climbing. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Uh, thank appreciate you. this so, so much. much. Thank you. Um. Wait. Yours are somatic, though. Oh, he well. can't. It's been hard for him to see that. I'll okay. try to get it. But the thing about this story is we have, we're having a lot of fun writing this. And you asked us about the, um, is it like each one's self-contained stories? And Chassie, you know, briefly talked about that. It is actually, so there is a it beginning, middle, and I don't, it's not going to be like the Spider-Man where it goes on forever. Like the story we want to tell has a, has a finite ending after that other people could come along and do their own stories within reason but the story we want to tell it, it there there is a, we're going exactly. somewhere with it yeah. because yeah, you said it's an epic it's not a yeah because i don't think it's really a spoiler but you, you said uh manga so I, I i'm an old school manga anime guy i don't like a lot of new stuff i i, I was more of stuff from the 80s and 90s when it was like really like kind of gritty the akira era and all that and vampire Hunter d era but one of my favorite mangas was is a berserk phenomenal comic it breaks my heart that kentaro's dead now so we'll never see the end of it but the way that story is structured is kind of how rabbit's based there's a lot of sim there's gonna be a lot of similarity between the narrative of berserk and rabbit so a thousand yeah. issues is what you're saying <laughs> well not that many no we we it, it would take to do the total the total's entire day it's going to take about 10 years because there's more characters too there is a universe this is a shared universe we're making our own thing you know rabbit is kind of like our spider-man he kicks it all you know and he got all the other stories it all it's his story but to tell it in its entirety we have to go to other characters so so rabbit and pop singer same universe yes it is yes <laughs> Very it cool. is. Yeah. There are connections. Lucifer Storm in the chat. Greetings and salutations. How the day, hey, my friend. <laughs> uh, just back the book. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank so, you that, so that's what this is like. Um, you know, <laughs> having people back books on your stream. Um, I'm unused to this. <laughs> I, I haven't got off this cover here because we've been talking about Rabbit, and this is such a gorgeous representation. But he does have a partner. Can you? Um, Tell us a little bit about her. <laughs> uh, Snow Bunny. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple different reasons. Obviously, you know, we're in a racial relationship. And, you know, we, we kind of... Oh, you said this started out as a joke. Yeah, it started as a it joke. Because, you know, we say, like, no, we like, you know, the black guy, name is white lady, and he gets fucked up because of it. You know, like, then, like, he comes back from man, like, she becomes, like, his, his Harley Quinn, like, the Joker Harley Quinn, Bonnie and Clyde scenario. But we'll make an interracial sure. You know, and just be very... Just be self-aware about it. Like he's literally wearing a black face rabbit mask and she's running around in cowgirl outfit. She calls herself Snow Bunny. I said, that's hilarious to us. <laughs> you know, so we said, let's why not? Rabbit and Snow Bunny. Hell fuck it. Let's go there. So go with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I for I forget who the there, there was somebody on the radio in St. Louis who would come in and uh guest host show. He was a black guy, took a morning show over and and the uh the two ladies who were always the co-hosts were white and he's like where are my snowflakes at this morning <laughs> <laughs> so so i i get it. it it's it's like so this is okay so this is lightfield mississippi 2010 this is when this starts 
Uh, yeah. this, is, this is lynching. And, uh, and, and if I remember from the video, his, his mother ran a brothel, so he wasn't. Yeah. Um, and he, that's coming from like literally, you know, a low background to come from. Yeah, and that's my that's my uh homage. I'm a, I'm a big uh Richard Pryor fan. You know, Richard Pryor grew up in a brothel, so that's why I got that idea from. I did not know that. Yep. And, and even like the name Rabbit's Badass Song, that's a play off of the, the the first black exploitation movie, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song from Mel Van Peebles. And the main guy in that was a, well, he was a, a a male prostitute who grew up in like a brothel as a kid. So kind of like a, a combination of the two. That, that makes it. I'm, I'm learning more stuff because, you know, you're taking your film background and your love of film and putting it in here. Uh, Mike has been paying attention, knows that Jill is a chef and a film student and a, a comic book writer. Yeah, she's a, a, a Jill of all trades. Um, <laughs> Not all trades. The important ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Neff is backer number four. I'm just, I'm just going to have to keep jumping up to the top of this page here, see where we're Thank at. Six backers so far. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Let's keep it keep it rolling, keep it counting. Uh, so this is artwork that we're looking at here from Rabbit's Badass Song. Yes. Uh, and, and when I what I what I wanted to know initially, and I think I can already tell from the pledges uh, or from the yeah the side here, uh, it's not that you've done one and two and now they're in, coming out in a trade paperback. It's literally two separate issues uh, that you're crowdfunding here, right? Yeah, it's actually three books. It's uh, Rabbit Issue 1 and we're first time printer pop singer, number one. And, and, and none of these issues have been seen anywhere. Well, actually, issue, uh, so we did some, some prints. Like, issue one and two, we did, uh, really, we, we actually uh, did those ourselves last year. The problem was uh, we had a website, but, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to get people to go to, like, you know, new websites. And that's understandable because you, ne you never know, you know the liability of them. So we, we sold a few of them online. A lot of them we, we sold either when we went to the combo convention or I, I was able to get in a couple of L LCSs, but that was kind of like it. So this is the Kickstarter is a good way for us to like get, it's kind of like our way of distributing the book to more people across the sure. way. You know, yeah. hopefully through that, we can build a stronger fan base so we can, you know, do a more the traditional end goal, The end goal distribution. is distribution. So yeah. to have enough inventory, because right now distributors, what they're wanting is because we send them the product and I don't think that's the issue. What they want are more titles. Yeah, it's hard to sell so, this one book to like a just, you know, like Diamond and uh, Lunar. Yeah. We, we, we had talks with Lunar. They seen that we, we, there was a little back and forth, but then it kind of fizzled out. So I'm not sure if they lost interest. Well, or they no, just they, didn't want they said they were uh, behind or something. Yeah, they said they're behind with all Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, they well, did. There's, uh, there's something to be said about having a catalog of work before you jump out in front of people. Um, I, I talk about these people probably once or twice a week. Uh, the guys who do Miskatonic High, uh, they, uh, are, they're out with a book every three months on Kickstarter. And the way they did it was they got five issues done before they kickstarted their first one. So they're, you know, constantly being six issues ahead um, and doing it three months, every three months. That's a, that's a schedule they can keep up now. That's the way yeah. to do it. And that's what we want. Cause I, 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 you know, I know a lot of, there's a lot of great independent books out there. And I know the problem is you now it costs a lot to do these things the right way. You know, there's some books you may not see the next issue for like three to four months. And it sucks because if you do lose, lose momentum, you know, our, our main goal is right now, it's about just getting enough funds to keep this story going. We want to tell the story. That's, yeah. that's no, above all else. That's the main thing we want to do. Yeah, you go too long between issues, you uh, you suffer what my friend Mike Tierney calls the expiration of expectations. Uh, yeah. People people forget about you, and then when they do see the next book, they're like, "Oh yeah, I remember I used to read that." Uh, yeah, I mean, I like, like see it still going on, and then yeah. and there's a lot of books. You know, what I'm saying there's a lot of books out there, so you got to kind of keep you got to keep grinding. Yeah, always competing, always competing. Yeah. But uh, uh, the artist is Helen Mate. He's based in Berlin. He's 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 traditional, and he does uh, the artist artwork you see. He doesn't do it on standardized uh, Bristol boards. He he he, oh, he draws on oversized pieces, so they're pretty big. Wow. He, that's that's how he gets all the fine details and stuff in there. But he's I mean a page like that, he's actually pretty fast, dude. He can do it. He can turn a page up like that out what in like half a week. <laughs> that's so a lot he, of ink on that page. Yeah, he's a beast. He 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 is. We're, we're blessed to have him. Now this this is a mature book. 
uh, for mature readers. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it earns its R rating right here. You get two F bombs in a row. Bam! MPAA says you're an R rated book. And there's 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 some overlay. There, there, the N word is placed there a couple times. So, okay. Well, but, you know. But I, I did want to say that this, this is not a, a again like this. The, the, there is some racial stuff in it, but this book is not about that. It's just. To tell his origin, we had to talk about that story. But once we get past that, we never go back to that again. So, yeah, because you know he was he was left for dead, uh, and and he wasn't. It was racially motivated, uh, ostensibly because it was a bunch of white, you know, good old boys that that did it. And and then he was lynched, which obviously carries the whole old South racial overtones there. Um, been a while since I've seen one of those. Like I've never seen one of those, but. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm sitting here thinking, it's been a while since I've been to a good lynch. And I was like, <laughs> get your story straight, man. I was like, oh, just because just you live down here. But yeah, I, thank thank God it's, uh, you know, almost a modern time in most places. It's not the 60s anymore. Uh, but I know, I know shit still happens uh, because there's still, you know, ignorant people everywhere. Uh, I like this. She's, 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 she's got that a hat kept down low over her eyes the whole time, kept nice and mysterious. And uh, she's getting ready to give this guy what for. And uh, this is when we first meet Bunny. Now, you know, yeah, it's, <laughs> chicken bones. There they are. It, it, it is Br'er Rabbit. And Br'er Rabbit was uh, very, uh, he was the smart one. Um, so, but but in, in modern comic book um, tastes and genres, Big masculine guy, bunny mask. Not two things you would normally um, put together and say, there's our hero, um, unless you're Dan Frega. Um, <laughs> and, and, and then it works for you. But this bunny mask is um, scary. I mean, you, you said it's mechanical. And, and here it is. The guy's got the, you know, the mouthpieces open. He's eating chicken. Um, and, and by the way, man, you got a black guy eating fried chicken in your book. How, how racist are we going to make this thing? Come on. I love chicken. Uh, <laughs> we got to cancel this thing right now. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, but just to see that mask chomp shut. I mean, that's that's something that uh, like, you know, th this is my hero academia stuff, level stuff right here. The, just the way that mask looks. So, I, I'm, so, so tell me more. I mean, you know, this. If you said there's superheroes in this universe, when do we know this? So do we know it after the first two issues, or is it uh, something coming? Yeah, there's Easter. So this one thing we love is Easter eggs, and like world, we do like world building, but I don't like we don't like doing the world building where throwing it in your face. So there'll, there'll, there'll be like a casual conversation about something, and it'll like kind of pop up in the air, and like it's kind of like a slow build. You just gotta like pay attention to little things in the background. Issue five is when we really go full force and like the, the other stuff going on in it because we're gonna actually do like a, a flashback of what happened to him, and uh, that's where you're gonna kind of see more of the superhero stuff in the black, you know, in, in that world. But it's not until the second story where you're actually gonna see th those characters in the story because they're gonna confront him based on something that happens at the end of this story. Okay, now there's nothing super. Uh, about him other than you know he's been obviously trained from whenever he was saved yeah to be able to do yeah, whatever he, he to do. Yeah. He, yeah he's human yeah right now yes he's human <laughs> currently okay. currently oh things can happen uh yeah. you know there's radioactive rabbits out there that can bite him uh, or, or, <laughs> it's comic books so we don't know yet um so i keep bound i I keep bouncing up and down these pages just because they're exquisite, man. This this stuff is good black and white comic book art. Uh, Thank you. And, and I think this is where it ends because we're getting ready to move into Pop Singer here. Uh, and, and again, you guys are the team on both of these, on all three of these books, right? I mean, you're the, yeah, you are the company. Yeah. And like, you know, eventually, you know, again, like, if, if things work out, we can continue going with this. When we get to the other stories, we do want to bring in some you know, other people, writers to help, you know, because we can't do everything. There's no way. You know, we, we got the story laid out in the characters, but eventually, you know, the other books come into play. We are going to try to expand yeah. on things. Yeah, we've got everything laid out. Yeah. So, yeah, if we did have someone else. 
It's all yeah, at, at some point, you know, Stan Lee's got to go get his Roy Thomas and uh, Jerry Conway's. And, there you and go. <laughs> so, um, so, so bumping into pop singer here. Now, this is is this is a different artist. No, same guy. Same, same guy. Yes, no, look, that that was the first thing we did together. So you know, he went for that when we first like like worked with each other. So he went a little more traditional on on pop singer. So you know, he didn't go as crazy as on Rabbit. Yeah, I mean, I can I can see Rabbit in this first panel, and then you get down here, and it's more of this uh, uh, clean and cutesy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of part of the story. Too. Yeah, because like so. this, you know, the, the pop singer, it's a self-contained story. It's a one shot. It's pretty much about this young female who wants to be a pop singer, and she she becomes one. And we kind of played off the whole tropes of the Illuminati, how like it's all like this conspiracy for satanic devil worshiping and stuff. So it's pretty much about her downward spiral into that. So 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 this is like you know all the all the legends I heard growing up uh, about backward masking and satanic rituals over. Yeah. Uh, the the, the 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 record stamps you know it's like oh satan let this song infect the hearts of the children of the world and then go yeah, press like the eyes wide shut you know people weren't you know all that crazy stuff so yeah yeah only only it's like real yeah. yes is that is that the case so the so so this is you know again same world so there are superheroes uh yeah and this is more supernatural based so you see like the more the, the you know the horror supernatural aspect of it which is very pivotal going further into the story because you know i i guess we could say no marvel and dc like they're more bigger stories always evolve around like the cosmic space stuff where our bigger story revolves more around the supernatural cosmic horror aspect of it okay so if i'm reading um rabbit's badass song and then i read pop singer what tells me that they're in the same universe other than you guys telling me on this interview right now that they're in the same universe Okay, so <laughs> there's one little thing, it's, and it's going to be, if you go back to the first page of Pop Singer, you see the doll in the background. Uh, mm -hmm. That doll is called Ferris Fox. That's like their version of Mickey Mouse. When okay. you get to the uh, fifth issue of Rabbit and the backstory, there's going to be a cartoon. It's a very pivotal part of the story. It's a cartoon that plays. That character is going to be in that cartoon, so you'll know it's the same world yeah there's something evil about that fox too like yeah, i'm just looking at it like yeah that's like an annabelle thing waiting yeah. to jump out of the chair and do something um so so pop singer she does she um she discovers all of this stuff uh that's going on in the industry as she rises up through it what the hell is she gonna do about it it's not a, it, it, it's not a happy ending <laughs> Again, it's one of those, it's a, it's a short, self-contained story, you know, almost like a Tales from Crypt type episode thing. Okay, so, so this is a one-shot on this Yeah, one. that's it, yeah. So. That leads into Yeah, you could actually, you could read that and never read Rabbit, and you wouldn't, you would, nothing would be taken away from it. Very cool. Uh, and then we, so, so let's see what is available here. Free U.S. shipping. We got to talk. Um, <laughs> you've got, you're going to have, uh, all the packages. Let's look at the bundles. You got a $12, uh, digital bundle here that you get all three of these books. Uh, how big are these books? Let's give me page counts. Uh, issue one's 28 pages. Issue two is 24 and then pop singer is 20 pages. Okay. Decent size floppies. Um, 12, $12 for all three digitals. Not bad at all. Um, does not include any of the unlock bonus freebies because you know you didn't pay for postage, so don't expect to, to you know get things in the mail when you get just the digital. Look, if you're going to get the digital, pop for the extra three bucks. Come on, <laughs> and get well, the first printing of the book itself. Everything physically shipping comes with all three PDFs anyway. So exactly, you, you, yeah. if you get the physical, you're going to get the PDF. Um, Fifteen dollars for book one. Uh, you get the, okay, now wait a second. Let me get this. Okay, their first printings are number one, first printings are number two, and they're already printed from what I understand, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're working from existing stock. You don't have to say, hey, we got to send it off to the printer. It's halfway done in the lettering process. Um, it's, it's, it's there. It's done. And you can 
all of this is available as an add-on. So pick one and buy the other if you wish. Uh, I think add-ons are the way of way things are going to go. I think I think campaigns are just going to pop up and say, "What's your tier? Here's the book. Everything else is on the add-on page. Go put it together yourself." Uh, coloring book. You've got an adult coloring book. What is in this coloring book? It's, we got it right oh, here. So it's, it's pages from the actual, for all the books. We took like the cool uh And just some like separate Well, where is the coloring book? Too. I don't see it. Did you not bring the coloring book in here? Did I not? I'll really get it. I'll really get it. It's not there. No, I'll get it. No, I'll get it. Okay. You go ahead. I'll break that. <laughs> well, it's a 20 page coloring book. It's um some of the, so I love to color. So I kind him and I both kind of like picked the pages that we wanted to color and like have the most fun with. And it kind of started out, um, we had a lot of questions about color and you know, Halil's work is so good in black and white. Yeah. Um, we felt we didn't need it, but we were like, Hey, if you want to color it, like we can make a coloring book. And so is, is, it, the, uh, is the coloring book available in PDF? It is not. That would have been a, a good idea but we, we well, i just say that because a lot of people like to, you know do digital coloring and they could like lift it and put it in their uh photoshops right. and, and you know do the coloring that way this is That's your copy don't open don't use the front page color now oh, okay sorry about that <laughs> well this is the uh coloring book here i, I, I get you i gave you the full screen so it looks good can, oh okay you can open it up. and uh i colored this one so we're not gonna look <laughs> yeah, at sure that one. see pre-colored pictures <laughs> uh, but like, so this is by uh, another artist, Warren. He did a rabbit page, and this is from issue two. Just a really cool panel of like everyone. Um, sorry, I had that upside down. The splash page there. Yeah. And then like right. full page with panels. Yeah, we tried to pull like the cool, like you know, the, the, the certain images from just from all the different books, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's very Sin City uh, with all that heavy inking on it. Yeah, and um, oh, that's good. that's lovely stuff. That's a fun one. Yeah, full pop singer. <laughs> Spoiler alert: de de There's a demon pop singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. I, I was asking while you were gone if you were uh, going to do a PDF version of the coloring book so people could, yeah. you know, do some digital Isn't colors. Uh, didn't think of that. <laughs> I didn't think of that either. Man, yeah, I know. Thank you. <laughs> That, that, you, never too late to add a tier. Uh, that's, true. that's true. Oh wow! You can't change them once they've been back, but you can always add new ones. Um, black and white signature number one virgin variant. That's a lot of words. It basically means it's number one issue, no logo, no color. Um, for people. And on the back, we call it the signature because we printed uh, the artist a little. We printed a signature. Yeah, print a signature name on the back. You know, try to do something a little yeah. fancy. Okay. So, so that's a printed signature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's not him actually signing. No. It. no. And be um, very clear on that. <laughs> oh, I thought we did because because he's in Germany, it would take forever to yeah. yeah. Put it on it here. But um, this is like the raw inked cover without anything on it. Yeah, without you know without the trade and all that stuff, just the image yeah. Stuff. And it's beautiful. I think so. And this is a soft touch laminate too, which I love. I'm like in love with the soft touch laminated books. <laughs> that's 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 the that's the issue that you can put in one of those comic book frames and put it right on your wall. It's going to look great. <laughs> uh, you can also get the uh, number two in a virgin variant. Now, th this one here, you know, people are going to start grabbing these things off of the web page and just running them through digital color processes because you got, you know, full body two full profiles and a fire uh every colorist in the world is jumping at the bit uh to uh to, yeah. to, to make this thing pop yeah i mean this is, this is a gorgeous cover he, he he killed it on this one i mean he kills on everything does but I, I really do like this cover a lot yeah it's fantastic 25 dollars for the uh, version cover there uh, and then of course there's pop singer now this is this is nice i like the way uh you get the, the keyhole you got the um mirror image piece to make the logo here and and it's black, white, and red, which, you know, is, is, is kind of what I was seeing. If I were going to color uh, rabbit, that, that's what I would have done. It's like, there's no colors. It's just you color the red stuff um, yeah. and you leave the rest of it alone. But that's just me. That's just me. 
Oh, and what do we have? Now, here we've got some variants here. So you got a, a, a Braga Bunny pinup. Virgin Bear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some good girl art. We said we said we needed we wanted more like the snow bunny theme prints, you know, because so people know she's just as you know important as rabbit is. So we, you know, this artist I found we found him on Instagram and he he does like a lot of like pin up of like Lady Dev and Vampirella. And I said, you know, I, I said we gotta hit this guy up. So he was down for it. I thought he you know he did a really good job. Gives a very more revealing snow bunny picture, you know, just just yeah. enough. <laughs> oh, oh man! I know what you guys need to do. And, What's that? And, and, and by the way, this this is what I uh, this is what I do, guys. I I always spend your money. Uh, whenever I have guests on, I spend your money on things that you didn't put on your campaign. There's a fella named uh, Sick Sec Six on Twitter, and he is a Hollywood professional mask maker. I mean, you you follow his. His Twitter thread, he's making Jason masks and Michael masks and, and everybody else masks, and they're these hard things. Bunny mask. Yeah. We talked. We, we wanted, actually talked about it. Yeah, we want we want we do want some rabbit masks made. I want one for myself. You know, but yeah, I think yeah. we're down for that. You made one years ago. Yeah, yeah. Vastly different. Yeah. But, you know. Well, he, I, he he does them in Hollywood quality um that uh that people pay good money for. So, you can see, send me his link. I got to check him out. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to find if he's got a web page too that just talks right about the masks. Uh, Luther says the soft touch lamination is the way forward. So um, he is yeah. he's, he's, he's in agreement is. with you there. His uh, book is soft touch too. So yeah, yeah that's where I got the and idea. He's an awesome book. <laughs> yeah, we, we and of course we ran his ran his video before the the stream here. Yeah, I saw it. Trying to do more with it, uh, but having connection issues with the people I'm trying to talk to. Um, secret Kickstarter Virgin variant. So why is it a secret? It's a great big word, a great big picture here. It's not a big secret. Anybody on the Kickstarter can see this. Well, what's, I what's think the, the well, a, a few, about a week, about earliest week, I did a, a video. I, I, I've been doing videos like all, all month leading up to this. And I did one. Showing yeah, showing everybody. I didn't show this. It, 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 it had, I was holding like a question mark. So you had to get, you know, get on the Kickstarter to see. But yeah, this is one we kind of dropped on there. Because early, about a month ago, we, we showed a reveal of all the, all the, uh, Rewards, but we didn't show that one. This is kind of like a last, no, like a afterthought. So, so this is the uh, the image for it, it, it's sort of like a, a paint splatter uh, of, of rabbit. Now, you talked about rabbit and bunny um, being sort of like Joker and Harley Quinn. Is is that really a, a good parallel? I mean, are they that kind of crazy? Or no, they... no, because well, no, 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 they're they're, they're more. Cause they love they each other. Really they, they're, 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 there's no abuse going on. And like Rabbit has a code. Like he he he's he's not a hero because he kills, you know. But he definitely he only kills people who deserve to be killed. You know, he doesn't harm yeah. he doesn't harm women or children. You know, and again, like the end of, and the Snow Bunny, she's the same way. She's a little crazy than him. Like no, she 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 you know she's a little more short tempered than he is. But they love each other. It's, it's a love story between those two. But no, they 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 don't kill just to you know for, to be sadistic. Rob Lee says, where do I get me a cute comic book nerd partner? I don't. Chastity, where did you find Chris? <laughs> the internet. <laughs> it does work You're out You're in the sometimes. right place, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, did, yeah, you guys, you guys are a couple. I mean, you mentioned you're in a relationship. Yeah. Um, Chastity, did you know he was a big comic book geek before you, uh, got deeply involved? Um, Yeah. Yeah, I did. And that didn't scare you away? Okay. No. There, there, there's hope out there for you guys, okay? <laughs> uh, $45. This is the black and white signature bundle. So this is both both the issues. You get a bit of a discount when you bundle them up. Um, and, you know, all, it keeps talking about these unlocked bonus freebies. We're getting to that. That's me scrolling mm -hmm. further down here. You can, uh, $65, you get both the, uh, the pinup bundles here. This, I, I think I scrolled past this one too fast because, wow, that's freaking gorgeous. Yeah. And I can't, we cannot pronounce his name. He, he's another general <laughs> from Germany. We, not, we, we never had, like, we've only text. We've never actually had, like, talk on the phone. So we don't know how to say his name. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the book. <laughs> oh, Musno? Yeah. Did I say it? Musno? I'm afraid I'm to say it. He's not here to correct me, so I'm going to yeah. go with it. But now he's a, again, he's a digital, he's a digital good girl artist, and like, like I saw, I said, dude, I said, no, I need you to draw Snow Bunny, <laughs> you know, and he yeah. just gave us a beautiful yeah. picture. 
this is the kind of thing that if you had like a slip case for uh for the book uh for the bigger book to go in that's what you'd want on it uh that that's that's just ready to be framed fuck that's going on my list um so we so we, we we were down here that's when i saw it again so you can get both of them for 65 uh you can get both the pinups um And then you've got the year one hardcover. Look at you guys. It's your first Kickstarter, and you're already going with year one and a hardcover. What, what, <laughs> what is in this? 65, 68 pages. What's in this thing? So this is uh, Rabbit, issue one, issue two, and Pop Singer. And these are these are the uh, oversized yeah, so pages. Like I, oh. so, yeah, so like I said, yeah. when Khalil, he draws, he illustrates on bigger paper. So when we when we did when we got the, the, the tip files and sent to the printer, we we had to make some adjustments to make it work for like the, the traditional comic books. But when we went to go to do the hardcover, you can kind of there's a lot there's a couple things you see extra on this that you don't get in the regular books. Like the the uh, yeah the borders the you know the bleeds and stuff. Course. But as you can see, like you know it's really just gorgeous, and I think it'll make a nice like this coffee table book. And it's the whole thing, you know, pop singer, rap the bad ass song, and like pop singer right here. Yeah. And then on the back, oh, we got all that. And Chastity, she designed all this. And she even did the front. And if you look on the front, on each of the letters is a, one of the pictures from the book. I love it. That's a very Frank Miller thing to do. <laughs> Don't you did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, she did. Um, Oh wow! You've done the print in virgin in metal. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we went to the same guys that uh, Brian Polito uses for his uh, Lady Death books. Cause we're big Brian Polito fans, and I'll let you show this one. You're very proud of this. Well, I just gotta make sure the light, because um, it's a uh, it's aluminum front and back. So this is the book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a print, but it's it's um, actually the book. Wow. It's the book, uh, aluminum front and back. I'm trying to. No, he gets sorry. it. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're good. It's not glaring. Okay. Too much. And then it's also metal on the back. Like, so there's an option, I guess, to do just the front metal, but why not do the front and the back? You know, I'm waiting for somebody to just come up with a whole uh, hinged system for pages. Just do the book all in metal, every single page. Just the that metal. That wild. Yeah. <laughs> so think about. I might. I think you guys do that. But yeah. So like in saying guys that uh do the covers for Brian Palio. And the, I forgot, I, I'm sorry, I, would, I wish I remembered the name of the company. I would name drop them now. They're really good people. It's, um, it's, uh, it's Red something. Ready Comics. Ready Comics, that's yeah. it. Yeah, they're based in Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holy shit! Sorry. Uh, uh, you guys got action figures! Yeah, we made toys. Oh, I'm just gonna, I just need to just keep this here. You guys have gone all out for the first, uh, for your first outing on Kickstarter. I mean, we tried. So, so your your level of confidence in this is is huge. Uh, because, yeah, well, you know, so, people don't know your character. Well, there's a story behind it. So, it, it's it's on. It's, it's at the bottom of this uh, Kickstarter and everything. But when we did when we first launched the book last year, we did like a viral thing leading up to it. We did like a fake '80s toy commercial, and uh, people liked it. That's hey, was me any toys? Uh, you know, maybe you know, toys are expensive to make. So I just I, I just custom made a select amount that we put on Kickstarter. It's only five. Five, pay, you get them in pairs. Yes, nobody get rabbit, and it's only five total that I made of that. So, so these are handmade jobs that you did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was, yeah, yeah, custom made. And yeah. you just print, printed the card. Yeah, oh man, that that takes me back to. Um, I used to my, my, when when I was married, my wife would walk into the kitchen, and there I would be holding an action figure by the boots with his head in boiling water, and she'd just turn around and walk out. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that's that's how you made the head pop off. Uh, yeah. easily. And that's, I, was, I was Frankensteining together all these action figures into action figures that they didn't make. Um, yeah, I did that too as a kid. Oh yeah, we all did. Duct tape and stick a Yeah, but I wasn't a stuff. kid. <laughs> I, was, I was a grown-ass man. But uh, oh. <laughs> hey, you know. but, so I, we, had a, we had a kid next door and uh, he was he was loving comics and uh, had his own character that he created uh, called Cosmo. Designed it up and uh, his birthday came around. I was like, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, and I knew a comic book artist uh, I said, here, I, I need your help with this. And we basically bought an action figure. I did the sculpting and the uh, the rearranging on that figure itself to make it look like his character. And then he did the art on the card 
and on the back of the card with all the stats for it. And we've done, we you know, like glued the, the plastic casing back on it with the action figure in it. And it oh. was like, you know, one of, one of a kind thing, you know, don't open it. <laughs> it's your figure and it's, you know, made by you. Uh, <laughs> God, he'd be 30 years old now. That's how long, that's how long ago this was. Wow. Uh, so I hope you still got it. Mark, if you got uh, your Cosmo action figure and you're cruising the net, say hi. Let me know you're out there. Um, here it is, the number one bundle. By the way, the uh, Lucifer said that the hardcover is the one he's backed. Uh, can't wait to get oh, my copy. You. This Thanks, campaign Lou. has to get 100% funded. Well, yeah, it does because it's Kickstarter. You don't have the choice. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's ride or die. Um, $100 bundle. You're going to get all, the, all this stuff. You're getting, you're getting uh, number one and the Virgin variant, and you're going to get the two prints. Um, now, these, when I look at these, these are just prints, right? These aren't virgin covers for the book no they, they no, are the books yeah they are the books okay so yeah. i thought it was like just a, a piece of paper but you're, oh, you're no. saying it's the actual book itself no books you get all the books yep, oh, so all... four books yes. yeah that's that makes this deal even cooler even better uh because I, I was prepared to pay it for a print because i'm like you know there's a spot right there next to my Catwoman print uh it's gonna <laughs> you know, hang, hang right there it's gonna look perfect um First print bundles of everything. This is issue one, issue two, issue three, and the hardcover. Um, so you know you can put your put your three away, keep them CGC ready, and still be able to read the hardcover, which is going to be way more durable. Um, that's just that sold <laughs> right yeah, now. Yep. Yeah. This this went away. The grayscale version of the toys are gone. Um, so you know after this, you got to go on Kickstarter and say sold out. It's done. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's that's cool. What? So why did you do a grayscale black and white? Uh, because of the number? book. Because, because of the black book. and white. Yeah. yeah. Makes it makes sense. It's like you and know those black, black, was... Batman black and white statues they make. Yeah, I kind of that's why I kind of got the idea from. Oh, you know, I can do that. So. Yeah, it's a clever idea. Go with it. Uh, this is everything right here. You're the rabbit bundle. Two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Get the hardcover. Get. All the variants here and then you've got 11 by 17 prints that come with this uh which include an 11 by 17 of the color cover and a black and white of it and that glorious scene of him in the kitchen um uh, that we that we saw earlier from the page you made an 11 by 17 out of that panel that's that's ballsy um it looks good it's worth it that's the one that deserves it i actually have it on which wall oh it's back and that's our room. Okay. Yeah. Got all these add-ons. I'm I I know the add-ons are things that we've already seen, right? They're yeah. well, except for this, this 11 by 17 print. That's just that's gorgeous. Bonus freebies. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll start sh showing some of that stuff. Right, all right. Know. I'm just going to I'm just going to talk about it and then you can show it when I see it. $2,000, the Pop Singer 2-inch Inner Circle sticker. There it is. Uh, I suck at this. Here, you <laughs> All right. It's cool. Yeah. The, the camera, there There you go. You got the glare off of there. So cool. Yeah, everyone's going to get Everyone's going to get that. Everyone's going to get that if you back the physical product as soon as the campaign hits $2,000. Uh, now, you got to show us all the question mark stuff here, right? Hmm. You want to do that? Just a few. Well, yeah, so you don't have <laughs> why their question marks are surprises, right? Uh, they but, are. but you know, if you if you want to break one. protocol, you're you're welcome to. It's your it's your show. Let but me, what I what, me, uh, what uh, uh, while she's figuring out, I think she has, she has to look at the list. But I, I do want to say what we're going to start doing. Uh, we got this idea because Brian Polito ha has something going on. Is we're going to do giveaways too, so. Once a week, we're gonna we're, we're gonna do the first one tomorrow. Yeah, the first one we're gonna do tomorrow. Whoever you know, all the people who backed it, we're gonna you know put a number on pieces of a, a little tick, a little paper, and put them in a basket, shake it up, and pull one out. Oh, and, you know, we put your name out. We're gonna get you're gonna get something extra thrown in. Your uh, are they gonna know what it is in advance, or are they gonna open it up and find it be a surprise we're, when it comes? We're gonna show. Actually, we'll show you right now what some of them are. Oh, so here's people, here's what you guys can. Follow follow their um, follow their schedule, folks, so that you can tune into these shows and uh, 
and yeah, we'll, we'll be all, we're all like we're all on like Facebook, you know, Twitter and Instagram. So we'll, and uh, TikTok. So we'll definitely be, you know, making announcements. But one is uh, the Ashcan. We actually did this last year. It was 100 of these. And we gave them out to people. Just It's like a, a, a pamphlet. It has like some of the pictures from Pop Singer in it. And okay. uh, in the back, in the back for the spec, you know, spectators out there, it's got the, the advertisement for Rabbit. So technically, this is his first appearance is in this. Gotcha. Thing. We made a hundred of them. We signed a number to each of them too, and they're all they're all over the place. I mean, they're all over the country. Uh, you know, some people you know. We, we I watched one get thrown. Yeah, we, we handed my we went to uh, the Knoxville convention last year. I saw somebody just take it <laughs> and it's like sticking their back on the wall. You know, that's making more, more, more money. Them. Yeah, so somebody's getting one of these. Um, well, we have a few of them. Yeah, we got yeah we got a few of these, so we're gonna get those away. The next one, we're, I'm a big fan of misprints, com, you know, misprint, misprinted comic books. Sure. So, <laughs> one of them is issue two. So, on the cover of issue two, let me see, let me pull it out. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I, I shipped a book for a guy, and um, as I was packaging them up, he he called me up, and said, "Hey, you got to check them all because a handful of them, the printer had picked up the stack of pages upside down." So you opened up the book, and the first thing you saw was the last page. Uh, Makes it worth money. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But so this was issue. So, you know, this is the regular one, you know, issue issue, issue two. Right. Right. All right. So, and this is the whoopsie. Can you know, can you can't see the difference? I, my eyes are not that good. What's the whoopsie on it? Look at the head. Look at the hair. One's got hair, one doesn't. Okay. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Okay. So, so the guy was drawn bald, and you're like, why? Is yeah, that was, all, that was all right. We all, we all goofed and missed it. I, I said, hello. I said, oh, shit. I've, like, I've, his, I've, he's missing hair. So, luckily, he was able to scan it and digitally put the hair in. So, it's right now. But yeah, this is, we got a few of these. I printed 20. Yeah. That, so, that was the first boo boo. The second boo boo was when she went to print the test copies of issue two, she printed the wrong one. <laughs> so, we got to get rid of these things. So, we're going to, you know, some you know we'll throw these in there for you know you in go. the drawing so and there's we we have other misprints when we did the first printing of rabbit last year we the first was like five of them right we got oh, oh five, like say five or ten we got the page were out of order like the money the hero shot you saw rabbit the splash page oh, yeah. that, that that was like the third picture for some reason so we got a few I think, of those I think there was like three of those. yeah so that's the kind of stuff we'll be giving away yeah page, pages out of order that's that's the bane of the the comic book writer. I um. I, I did a review of a scholastic graphic novel. They sent they send me you know the, the the graphic novels in advance, and it was a hardcover and it was an artist and writer combo that I absolutely love. Uh, and I was like reading it, and I was like suddenly it didn't make sense. And I read a little further, and like oh here's the problem. And I got the PR guy, and I'm like, hey. Uh, on these arcs you got me, before you go to final press, you need to make sure that, you know, page this and page this gets switched around because they're printed out of order. Mm -hmm. and, and he got back to me and says, thank you. We will take care of that. Um, and then when I'm talking, I was like, good, did my job, you know, special proofreader. Uh, but then when I interviewed the artist later, I was like, he, he in the after show, he showed me the hardcover. I'm like, oh, is that the hardcover arc uh, that, um, you know, the one with the misprinted pages? He's like, oh, that was you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Those were not arcs. They printed. They they, they had several thousand uh, copies that they had to pulp uh, because of the misprint Ouch. inside. Yeah, it was it was that was painful. So some junior editor probably lost a job over that um, for not catching because you know they're editors. They don't they edit books. They don't edit comics. It's a totally different. Right, place. right. You want to show them the thing? I think Chas wants. Oh, show us the so, thing. We'll, we'll show you uh, the unlocked at uh, four. The next one, which is um, that's the fourth. Unlocked the fourth. It's another sticker. It's the cover version. You know, black is and white. Three inch sticker. It's a three, three inch sticker. Yeah. Very cool. We love stickers. Stickers go on Perfect. everything. We've got a few of them in here. <laughs> and and but but you know after eight thousand you plan on even more. Uh, mm -hmm. You have an expected timeline. This is nice. This is, you know, let people know when things are coming. Uh, Cause you know, there's always that estimated delivery thing. Uh, Kickstarter's over June 18th, one month from today. Um, and then by end of June, Kickstarter will probably have all your funds in cause they collect it at the end and then they hold on to it. 
uh, for a little bit. Orders going to be placed with the printers. Now this is so you still got to print some stuff. Yeah, like like the very the no, like second the prints, second prints and stuff. Um, yeah. They already have the files because we've ordered some of them. So all I have to do is say, "Hey, finish that print job," and that's it. They have everything. We've already seen them. Their proofs and ready to go. Excellent. There you go. Uh, and and you know you, you keep saying free shipping on everything, which means, folks, that you know the the when you click on any of these, the fifteen dollars. Um, the, the whatever dollar amount it is, that's the dollar amount you got. Uh, so there's not going to be you know, like, oh, it's uh, $25, but then there's another $750 for shipping or $10 for shipping. Um, makes it easy to add up that way. Uh, you got more videos here. You, you guys are holding these action figures. That's a good shot. Uh, Just some of the reviews. So there's reviews. How did I miss out on the reviews? Um, <laughs> There's a vintage chicken commercial. Okay, we're playing that. And that's the yeah. Easter egg within the comic. <laughs> Come on in to Chicken Pickens, where you and your family can feast on a meal for just ten ninety nine. Don't forget to add a bottle of Damien's Hellfire Hot Sauce. Remember, when your family picks chicken, make it Chicken Pickens. That's that's a that's a decent commercial. <laughs> for I'm hungry for chicken now. And then the one above that was the uh, 80s. Yeah, the, one, the toy the commercial toy commercials above there. that one. Yeah. yeah, that's the toy commercial. Rabbit's badass song. Bring the action from the pages of the comic to your phone. Now, you and your friends can be the heroes of Lightfield, Mississippi. Rabbit's here to clean up this town. Don't worry, nobody's got your back. Watch out, it's the good boy. I got this one, Rabbit. He's not getting out of this sticky situation. Yeah, chicken breed. This one's mine, bunny. With new high talk, high kick action. We're coming for you, Judge. Rabbit's badass song. Collect all the figures. Figures and accessories not actually sold separately or together. Anyway. From Flash Delirium. Why aren't they? I need those figures. <laughs> I need those figures now. That was wait, okay. Okay, so so whose kids are those? Because actors. So we have like a lot of friends in the film community, and one of them, um, actually, a couple of them, are uh, teachers, and they teach like really talented theater kids and things like that. And and they were able to uh, find us those two very talented kids. Yep. to help us shoot this commercial and you made it look so 80s i mean uh how are, are there filters out there that say okay 85 this this video it, uh, you, yeah. It's, yeah it's all post yeah <laughs> like they just went out and got a camcorder and just, just i shot. mean dude, there's apps on my phone that can make it look like like, like you know you can make like dhs recordings now so yeah it, it's very that stuff's so accessible now like you couldn't do this like 20 years ago you just couldn't no. do it you know so but, but, you know, I know that two of those action figures do exist. I mean, well, hell, all four of them exist. We saw them. They were playing. I still, I still have those props, you know. I always said, you no, know, you know, depending on how things go, maybe they could be something that could be given away. Maybe. maybe. It just depends, you know, how, how, the, how, the, how the campaign it's goes. It's going to be kind of hard to part with. Yeah, yeah, but, you know. Very hard to market an action figure of a guy in a KKK hood. I just did. <laughs> you know, there, you know. How, how's this kid going to learn about this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he's the bad guy. Um, if, if, if you don't teach people that there are bad guys out there, they will forget that there are bad guys out yeah, there. That is true. Then the vicious cycle begins again. Exactly. Exactly. Um, four, four inch figures. You. This is this is cool. You got the, um, the measuring stick here, so people can get scale. Uh, yeah, this is this is great stuff. So there we go. We've seen the whole thing. And I haven't scaled back to the top here yet. Um, just uh, 11 backers. I am beside myself. I'm very Thank humbled. You. Thank you, everybody yeah, in the chat you. for jumping in. And I realize that, you know, probably 90% of those people were just expecting you to launch anyway, and they're not really here. Uh, but but uh, the rule is if you get stuff on your on your campaign while you're on my show, I take credit for all of them. Um, <laughs> that, that's just how it rolls here. Uh, Wow, that was an hour and a half that just flew by, and I normally just do an hour. But oh wow, well, well, you know, I don't, fun. <laughs> well, we were having fun. That's what 
if we're having fun, we'll go a long time. You, you saw the episode with Hart, four hours and seven Jack and Cokes. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, so what happened with that? That's okay. When, when, when it got to like the two and a half hour mark, it's okay. I'm just going to pretend it's a podcast. I'm going to put the phone down and start doing stuff and listen to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that one went long. I mean, I've I've done some long ones before. I had uh, you know Bill Willingham was on, and uh, you know, like I said, I try to do it at an hour just because I'm trying to be respectful of your guys' time. I got nothing better to do, um, so I can be here all night. But you know, I looked at the clock and it was like two and a half hours later. I'm like, I gotta let this guy go, <laughs> or I'll just keep him all night. Um, one Saturday uh, when I first moved out here, and again, nothing better to do and nothing to do with my time. Stream for 12 hours straight, just uh, and it was like 12 one hour shows in a row. And and the last 12, the last show was with Don Chin, and we went an hour and a half. So it was like 12 and a half hours of just me, butt in chair, microphone, and there's where here we were. I need to do that again sometime. Podcast Palooza all over again. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for bringing this here and and and. Thank you. Launching on Thank my you. stream. I really appreciate it. Um, appreciate you having us. We appreciate I mean, everybody. I know there are bigger, bigger and better channels you could have gone to and maybe had a bigger turnout. But, uh, you know, 8%, almost 10% of the gold done. Uh, we, we've tithed it. So we're, we're, we're in. I can't wait to back this with myself. This looks like a really fun book. Um, real, I say, you know, it's, people are going to get killed and eviscerated. And there's a lot of horror. And that's a fun book. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> We think so. Yeah, we think so. You know, it's, it's not it's not dread, dread. You know, what I'm saying there, there's there's some funny moments and stuff and everything. You, you, you got somebody to root for, and you know, we, funny enough, we're big Pixar fans, and I love like we we love like their approach to storytelling, which is make the audience care, and that's kind of what we want to do with the Flash and Lyric. Yeah, we want to make you care about these characters, despite the craziness, the gore, the crazy mask, and all that shit. At the end of the day, there is a you know it's about the characters. You know you got you, you got to identify and like the characters and stuff. So, have you ever uh, checked out the um, the unified Pixar theory? Yeah, it, I, I I buy it because I mean sir, it, it's almost too perfect. <laughs> you know, it, it's, okay, yeah, this totally makes sense. Yeah, it's like the entire the entire Pixar universe takes place after Wally. Um, yep. Because because everything just kind of including cars is like it's like Wally, Toy Story, Cars, and then Brave. Um, yeah, it gets wild because like what was like the, the uh, little girl from um, Monsters Inc. They yeah. say she's the witch, right? From um, yeah, from Brave. Yeah, yeah, because you know she's she's got a Sully carving there, and uh, she disappears through doors, uh, just like you know the monsters did in Monsters Inc. She's learned how the she's trying to find Sully. That's what they said. And the importance of wood. Wood is a very key element in a lot of Pixar films. You know how yeah. it's, how it's magic. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, dude, I love Pixar. Like, I mean, that that Disney would not. I don't think they would make rock Pixar. I mean, I know they got Marvel and stuff, but I mean, but that's like far as the animation goes. Like Pixar, that that's their best thing. Yeah. Like those guys really know how to tell stories. <laughs> I, I hope they. I hope they get back to that. I think uh, the last couple of Pixars haven't really done that well. Uh, what was that one we watched? We didn't, you couldn't finish oh, Luca. it. Yeah, Luca. I was, I, I gotta try to, I gotta try to watch that one again. There's I did Luca, like the, one. There's, uh, the red panda one that they just put out that I can't even remember the name of. Yeah, I didn't my watch that one either. Red. Yeah, my 14 year old son's seen the trailers, and every time we walk past the DVDs, like, that stupid movie. That's a, such a, I hate that movie. Like, you haven't <laughs> even seen it because, like, I don't care. It was stupid. Uh, the, the one, the one with uh, Chris Pratt and um, um, Lightyear. Yeah, Spot no 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 uh Spider-Man uh they're like the the blue uh troll dudes or something. Oh, oh, oh yeah, for on onward. That was actually good. A lot of people slept on that one. I actually thought onward was a really sweet story. I, I, I would that was it was a good story. I liked that one yeah. a lot. I liked the ending of that one. Yeah, with the oh, dad yeah. like you know it's that's a damn you Pixar. They make me they, they know how to get you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you know he's 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 going you through all of this to to see his dad that he's who he's never seen, and then at the end is like, you know, oh, wait, I'm not the one who needs to see him. Uh, you, you're the one who needs to see him. Uh, I was like, I didn't see that coming, and you're sacrificing this, you know, event that would be so meaningful to you. But uh, anyhow, yeah, it gets you. Yeah. Oh, did it, you it, um, did you happen to see the She-Hulk trailer that dropped? I did. Just before we came on here, I, I saw did. it. She hasn't watched it yet. Um, she looks I'm cool. A bit more. 
I, I don't know what to do. I don't understand what's going on with Hulk. Like they, they, they just they, I, don't, I don't know what they're doing with him anymore. <laughs> you know, what well, I'm saying? I, I didn't like his treatment in game. I did not like the way he, he was handled. I don't yeah, know. I, I, I'm not crazy about Bro Hulk. Um, you know where he's like, you know, time travel. Hey, look, I'm a I'm a celebrity. You know, I'm 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 the Hulk. People no, take he, selfies with me. I, I'll be honest with you, man. I'll say a popular opinion. I liked it all. Edward Norton. I thought I liked his Hulk. Yeah, yeah, and and I was okay with him in the first movie actually, where you know he's like, you know, I'm always angry, and he just you know, rampaging Hulk, Hulk in glasses. Yeah, there was a point where that was the Hulk. Mr. Fix it. Peter David run. Yeah. But we missed all the story that built up to that. And we didn't get the story that came after that, which was, um, I'm going to, I'm going to Hulk fan out a little bit here now. Um, where Doc, Doc Samson, you know, is like merge the personality. Yeah, and he comes right. and says, hi, honey, I'm home. And he's, he's big and he's smart. And Doc Samson says, yeah, but we've merged the three personalities. There was that fourth one that savage hulk we have he he didn't show up we don't know where he is and the tragedy of him devolving into that uh savage hulk later on in fact the thing i really really liked was when they figured out that smart hulk if you got him mad he turned back into puny banner and puny banner would be the one raving about you know well hulk smash puny humans and he's like you know 98 pounds and skin and bones (laughs) And that was like the Hulk's weakness. Now, if you made him mad, he turned into somebody weak. That was, so he had to stay calm. Hulk got a lot of good stories, man. Uh, have oh, you read Peter Immortal Hulk? Genius. The, Did you read heard what? Have you read Immortal Hulk? I've not. I've heard good things about it. That's good. That that it's, it's surprising. It is definitely. It's not like a lot of other Marvel books. It's, it's definitely it, it surprised me. You know, it, it's more horror esque to a point. You know, they they definitely get more into like the different personalities of the hulk and like you no know, the devil hulk and stuff but i'll check it out man i think you might like that one. yeah because could i i don't know if it was in immortal hulk that he talked about this or or in one of the other hulk books where banners like you know i tried to kill myself and uh i had a gun and i pulled the trigger and before i could before the bullet came out i was hulk uh hulk yeah. came out and stopped me from but yeah I, I noticed that in the movie the, the, the avengers maybe that's where it was like i, I yeah, knew i heard it somewhere yeah. um but yeah there's there was so much going on with hulk in all of those films uh, the second movie where he's like, you know, he couldn't get Hulk to come out and it was like trying to force him out. Like, why is all this going on? Why are we not getting a Hulk movie that tells us these things when we're getting Captain America and Iron Man movies? And and I guess it was because the producers were like, yeah, we've done Hulk movies. They don't sell. But you weren't doing this Hulk. You weren't doing MCU Hulk. Well, um, one, of the, one of the issues they had, I knew, was because Universal still, the, the rights are weird with Hulk. Like, they, Universal still kind of has rights to them, so that's why they can't just do a Hulk movie without Universal's permission, I think. That's why okay, they so can do a solo, but they could, that's that's one of those weird Sony Spider-Man kind of things. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those. No, that, that But that was back when Marvel was going bankrupt. They was like, here, take the damn book. You know, they, they were trying yeah. to get money. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they went bankrupt because I invested in them that year. Um, that was, God, what that, that was like 96 and I, I, my first time trying to play the stock market, I put money in, put money in Marvel, only because I wanted the annual report because Marvel's annual reports were published as a comic book, uh, and it was like, you know, oh. obviously you're never, there weren't going to be as many of those as anything else. And they'd be collectible. I put money in Marvel, I put money in L.A. Gear, and I put money in Levitt's Furniture. All LA three of them went bankrupt by the end of the year. Uh, L.A. Ow. Gear came back though. <laughs> yeah, like they didn't give me any money. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't that bad? Was Marvel really in that bad shape back in the nineties? I, mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was so young; I, can, I don't remember it. Yeah, they they were they filed bankruptcy, uh, reorganized, and then you know they they put stock back out there, and they're like, as a former stockholder, you're eligible to buy this stock at you know this rate, and it's like you know twenty times more than what it was when I had it. I'm like, no, as a stockholder, you should replace what you took from me. Uh, <laughs> but they did. I don't have stock in Marvel now, and and now what are they doing? They're making you know billion dollar movies, um, making. I, I still haven't seen uh, Multiverse of Madness though, so it was fun. I liked it a lot. I'm, I, I know there are scenes in there. There's a lot of Easter eggs. Um, oh yeah, I I expected to see Logan in it because if if I if I go down the Lego aisle at Walmart, they had Lego sets of you know Marvel superheroes. 
and all of them have been, you know, MCU ones. And then they had a Wolverine mech suit. I'm like, they've never done X Men. The only reason they would do Wolverine is if they had a Marvel movie. Oh, is he going to be in Multiverse of Madness? Um, so I'm, I'm going to see if there's any hints of him in there. They had they had Xavier. They had you know <clears throat> the other characters that I've heard of. So it, it was it was fun. It was def- I mean, this ain't a spoiler. Like it, it's definitely Sam Raimi. It's a very Sam Raimi movie. Like almost, I was surprised how much freedom, creative freedom they gave him. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> well, and I, I and and because it's a Sam Raimi movie, of course, you had to have Bruce Campbell in it. Of course. As, oh yeah. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> they doubled down his contract. Oh yeah, they doubled down on that. But uh, yeah, I like. I mean, my favorite Marvel movie right now. I loved uh, the last Spider Man movie. No yeah, well. that was phenomenal big, to me. Big fan service in that one. That um, was, I, I told people like when you see all three of them teaming up, that to me was a cooler scene than the end game scene. Whereas that Captain Jill left for me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was underwhelmed by End Game. Uh, the whole you know five years have passed and we've been doing jack all while we're kind of sitting around moping, uh, and 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 after five years we're still moping. Yeah. Move on, folks. <laughs> it was like, kind of a mess. Endgame was kind of, I mean, I like the Infinity War, but Endgame was kind of a mess. If you really look at what, what it was, like, I don't know. There was so yeah. much going on, though, that even, like, you had Ant-Man as, like, the giant Ant-Man. And then the very, yeah, the right, he was actually not Ant-Man. He was in the van. So, like, in the background of one of the You scenes, see him again, yeah, when yeah. When he's in the van. But you see him outside of Giant Man. You see him man. in the background of Giant <laughs> Yeah, like, if you, if you watch that battle scene again, like, it, it's choppy as shit, dude. Like, there's so much inconsistencies there. Like, wow, this is like a multi-million dollar movie, and they just... Because it was just so much oh, more money. Yeah, it's a mess. I like that, I mean, but uh, the story, I just won't... Cr- it just didn't... It still didn't keep you from watching it, like, 20 Oh, no, I'm still watching. I mean, it's Marvel, yeah. I'll watch it. I mean, I did not like Eternals. I, I, you know, that's my least favorite Marvel movie. I, I, I watched it once. And I was like, I had so many questions about that because I, first of all, I wasn't a huge Eternals fan. No, and nobody second was. Of all, I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you, Iron Man was different than the Eternals. You know, Iron Man's like, well, Iron Man's one of our D-list characters. I'm like, yeah, but the Eternals are down here like in the J's. Uh, you know, there's, you've really got to dredge them up. But um, I'm sitting here thinking, they're created by this big, powerful being to go protect this egg. Why would this big, powerful being give any of his artificially created beings artificial handicaps? Uh, right. You, you know, so so you know, I, I know that the the one character who was a a deaf mute uh, who con- communicated through sign language. Mm-hmm. Like, why? Why would you hamper your your creation this way if you need them to be at peak efficiency? Um, I agree. I mean. <laughs> my, my my biggest two issues with that we don't want there was really no villain in it like who did fight like, it was, it was like what are we doing here like yeah that, that, the, that was a big the villain issue. was their creator that, that's what what it ended up being you know they're yeah, like oh there's an egg uh don't let it hatch but you know and it's not that i'm like I'm not saying you know a hero can't be you know deaf or mute or blind i was daredevil come on yeah uh, right like but your origin is that you're created to be a perfect thing and you have this you know hampering that is gets in the way of things it, was it, 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 it just said you know something like you know and you know you know during the process or on the way to earth we got hit by meteors and your pod was damaged something like that i like, oh okay now we've at least got an explanation for you know casting the character the way we did but nah it just it just was an unexplained yeah this is born like i'm thinking about the visuals like this is the one good thing about it terms was Jack Kirby's artwork. You know, he he that was him making all this crazy ass art, you know, costuming and stuff. Like, well, nobody looked like that in this movie. Like Thor Ragnarok, at least in that, everybody's kind of it, that looked like a Jack Kirby film. I said, why didn't they have that look for Eternals? That would have kind of made it look a little better, visually exciting. Because from a child's point of view, Eternals is a boring movie. Like, no kid's gonna yeah. sit there and watch that fucking thing. It was, it was, it was, it was <laughs> definitely, definitely long and boring. Uh, and it didn't even get a good introduction of the Black Knight in, which was the only no, thing. No, that was weird. Like, Blaze off camera. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the speaking part. exactly. But, you know, at the same time, at least um, it was a better Kirby representation of the Eternals than the Fantastic Four gave us of Galactus. <laughs> that didn't happen. 
that, that, no. that just didn't happen. <laughs> Out of head cannon, Gal Galactus did never showed up on screen. Period. Ever. I did like Silver Surfer though. They did an okay job with him. But, uh, they did. Yeah, that one was okay. Wow, we're uh, geeking out about comics more here, and I'm going to yeah. tell you on the way out that you have 12 backers. You're at nine percent of goal. So oh, keep thank it up. you so much. Uh, thank you. Go, go on to more shows, please. Uh, get, get get the word out there. I hope you guys have a full schedule. Well, yeah, we're going to be on uh P O P O P X P uh yeah Thursday. N Nile Scala. Okay, so you're not taking tomorrow off, are you? Come on, you got to be hitting the ground running here. Yeah, I'm trying to find some. <laughs> okay, well, Pop, Pops was in the chat. Pops Van Zant, uh, hit him up. He will have you on. Um, hey, Pops. Yeah, like, I, I, sorry about the I got. I'm using my phone for the cameras. I could. I, I'm seeing people message me. I just can't get to it right now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I get you there. Um, I really to most most people have started to move on because they're like, yeah, show's over. It's just idle chatter now, uh, and and that's true. So with that in mind. Folks, thank you for coming on tonight. I uh, do appreciate you picking our thank stream. You. Thank you. Everybody in the chat, uh, appreciate you guys being here. As I always say, we don't have a show without you. And as always, while you were here, we just hope you had a blast. Good night. Good night. <laughs>